Uh, first up, we have some coming soon. It's a big announcement from yes. Raspberry Pi. They're teaming up with, you know, tonight is a Lego theme. It They're teaming Lego up theme. with Lego. Yep. This is a Raspberry Pi build hat. Yes, it has an RP2040. We do not own any of these. Otherwise, believe me, I would show you yeah, one. Um, it's, a, it's a hat, hardware on attached to the top of a Raspberry Pi. Plugs into your 2x20 Raspberry Pi. So anything from a Pi uh, 2 uh, or 1B plus up to a Pi 4, or Pi 0. And um, it is designed, uh, if you go back, it's got four slots for sensors or motors. Um, the, these slots, I believe they're uh, two I2C pins, two motor pins. Uh, and two power pins, I think, um, maybe a PWM pin, but these are um, used with Lego spike and like mechatronics robotics parts. So, um, you know, one nice thing about, you know, we sell robotics parts, we just sell like raw motors and stuff, but the stuff that comes from Lego is durable. I mean, it's meant for kids and PhD students alike, um, both of which are very destructive human beings, um, to play with robotics and sensors and, and have this very simple plug and play system. Um, you know, that said, I think, you know, even though they're doing MicroPython with, um, you know, Lego Mechatronics products now, you might want to have something more powerful. You might want to integrate it with Minecraft. You might want to integrate it with Scratch. You might want to integrate it with Python. Attaching it to a Raspberry Pi um, and then using the Python library that has been written um, will make it a lot easier for people to be able to do, like, quite advanced robotics. Another thing is the camera on the Raspberry Pi is really powerful. You can do machine learning stuff where yeah. the camera on the Raspberry Pi is recognizing stuff and then moving the motors um, through the uh, build hat. Uh, I'm just going to toss in a prediction. So the Raspberry Pi Trading Co., you know, they, they took funding. Yeah. And uh, eventually, you know, you got to sell. Yeah. Uh, that's Or go public or yeah. something. something. Uh, why wouldn't Lego just buy them? That'd be a nice, that'd be, sure. that'd be a pretty good match. Good Anyways, match. speaking of Raspberry Pi stuff. Uh, There's also a power supply that goes with this. It's coming soon, though. This also coming soon. Don't have them yet. So the, the, the build hat requires a power supply, and this is an 8-volt, 6-amp power supply. It's a, it's a little bit of an odd voltage, right? 8 volts, it's like not 5, and it's not 9. Um, and it needs 6 amps because, you know, the motors are, are quite chunky. They can draw, you know, an amp or two a piece. Um, so uh, this... Power supply is designed specifically for the build hat, and the build hat has a, a step-down converter, so it'll also power the Raspberry Pi when you use this power supply. So um, we'll hopefully get uh, both of these uh, again. You know, chip between chip shortages and, and shipment uh, delays, but yeah, we'll um, hopefully we'll get these by the holidays. Next up. Okay, next up, um, retail. You know, we're talking to the ARM uh, Foundation and, and Realtek, and they were like, "Hey, can you carry some Realtek stuff?" And we're like, "Yeah, we'll carry what. What do you think we should carry?" And they're like, "Well, why don't you carry the Realtek?" Amoeba IoT dev kit. And I was like, okay, yeah, this is kind of an interesting dev kit. Um, Amoeba is interesting. Um, you know, there's there's definitely high competition right now for microcontrollers, especially ARM Cortex microcontrollers and similar, um, where there's a Wi-Fi and or Bluetooth module uh, built into the core. And um, that's what um, Amoeba is. It's a, you know, the module that you see there, it's, it's kind of a chunky module, but it has a, a dual core ARM processor. I think it has Wi-Fi, has BLE5 um, support. So it's kind of like an IoT processor and it's designed to be low cost, easy to use. And one thing that is nice about it compared to um, Espressive Core, it uses ARM. There could be situations where you're like, I really need an ARM core. Um, to do the development, maybe I'm using pre-compiled binaries, or maybe I have optimizations that, uh, or I just really like the ARM uh, Cortex uh, system. I don't want to have this, you know, alternative uh, Tensilica processor. Um, in which case, uh, check this out. So uh, it's a dev board. Let me zoom in. Okay. Um, so this is the the module itself, and uh, it's got a tin, and it's got the antenna. Uh, it's got audio output, it's got microphone input, it's got a couple buttons here. Um, on the back, it's got a micro SD slot. This is a USB serial converter. It, uh, I don't believe it has native USB. Well, I could be wrong. It really looks like it does. This is probably the native USB. And this is the FT232R. So this is the uh, USB serial converter. So used for debugging. Um, this does have uh, Arduino core support through uh, Realtek. You can download a board support package and they have example code for um, using it with uh, with Arduino to connect to Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Um, you know, I always like carrying like, you know, lots of different chipsets. We've carried like 10 different Wi-Fi boards 
And uh, this is another one. Yeah. It's not for beginners. I think if you want something that has tons of examples, um, maybe use uh, Espresso or use a Raspberry Pi. But you know, there are situations where you might want to experiment with a new platform or you want to use Amoeba, this dev kit's great. Okay, and uh, next up, the stars of the show tonight, besides you, Lady Ada, our community, our customers, our team, and everyone here tonight are some DINRAIL stuff. That's why the code was DINRAIL. Yeah, yeah, we're going to get back to having some more Dinrail, Adafruit made stuff, but Dinrail, uh, in the meantime, Dinrail, we have some DINRAIL. Dinrail, Dinrail. So we got so two things. We got two different ones. Yeah, so people really do like our DINRAIL, um, like breakout boards and stuff, and I was like, well, we should carry something that's just like a kind of a simple terminal block. Um, so we have two options. One's like a one-to-one, 10 by 10, and one's a two by six. So let's go to I the- like, I like showing these photos of mass. I know, there's like snakes. Okay, so yeah. let's go to the uh, overhead and I'll show the, 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 the 10 by 10, for lack of a better word. So this one, um, you know, again, there's a, this is a terminal block and you can uh, push to, you know, I don't want to break my nail, but you can use a, a screwdriver um, to press in to release um, or plug in stranded core or solid core wire. Um, this one, if you see there's numbers, the number goes from one to 10. So each one of these, each 10 terminal blocks, uh, they connect through one to the other side. So this blue wire is connected to this blue wire, this white wire to the white wire, this green wire to the green wire. So this is for like, you know, basically making wiring jigs. Um, of course, the slots on these terminal blocks are kind of chunky. So if you, if you want to connect multiple wires inside, you could probably do like two or, you know, or three. Uh, 22 gauge wires on each side, but it really is like a one-to-one -one connector. And then on the bottom, there's the dim rail slot. And then the two by six, this is kind of a power distribution bus. So on one side, there's only a two pin connector and there's a little plus and a minus. So you can imagine you have power in here, plus and minus. And on the other side, there's a whole row. The top row is plus and the bottom row is minus and you get six of each. So this is really good for like, okay, I want to distribute uh, my five volt or 12 volt or eight volt power in and then out. Um, I can see this being used for like NeoPixel strips. You know, you have like one gigantic 10 amp power supply coming in here and then strips going out to individual NeoPixel strips on the other side. Um, either way, they fit perfectly on classic DIN rail. This is my little magical piece of DIN rail. Um, and for the so folks who aren't familiar with DINRAIL, when, where would these DINRAILs be besides, you know, this demo in your hand? Like, where, where, where do these exist? The only thing is it's always hard for me to remember which way it goes. Um, where do they exist in the world? So they're often used in, um, well, industrial and uh, mechatronic projects, like when people are doing uh, industrial projects, because um, basically you can just attach stuff to this the standard, it's DIN just means it's a standard railing um, and you can move stuff around. So I see these in robotics. I see this in automation processing. I see this um, when people are um, building room sized projects where they want to um, yeah. mount electronics securely, but it's still like exposed and you can get to it. What about like uh, server racks? S server racks, I don't think they use DIN rail, but you can attach DIN rail to server yeah. racks. Sometimes, you know, they'll have a, um, the servers usually go into, uh, you know, one U slots. Yeah. Um, I think DIN rails are, I don't think that's what they use in server rooms, but I could be wrong. But they, you know, for, for other parts of the server room, they might, you know, yeah. on the wall if they want to mount something. Um, but I see that, you know, basically whenever people do large projects, um, it's kind of a favorite. M mechanical engineers love this shit, by yeah, the way. Folks are saying PLC controls inside of kiosks, telco closets, inside yeah. of server cabinets. Yeah, yeah, cabinets and closets. Because it's easy, you know, there's a lot of mounting holes you drill this on, and then you can yeah. easily slide things around, attach it, detach it. It's a, it's a way of doing attachment. Um, and then you can, um, sometimes you can uh, loosen these, or you can pull this up, and then you can yeah, you know, remove it. Yeah, there's screws on the side, maybe that, there's something yeah. in that. I don't know. Anyways. Uh, so we have a couple of real things like breakouts and stuff, and now we just have yeah a little yeah. bit of more real party going on here. And that's new products. Yay! Bye -bye.